The second aspect that was raised out here is, you know, foreign policy, there is, uh, and this is taking on from what Major Arya said, is that, you know, th there's always a problem in taking military um, advice in foreign policy, and I don't know why, because he makes a very good point it should be taken. And if you go to the U.S. Uh, 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 Marine War College, there was this paper that came out by a Marine called Why Defense is from Mars, and you know there's that book, Men are from Mars and Women are from Venus? It was a take on that. Defense is from Mars and state is from Venus. And that's because foreign policy tends to be very esoteric. It confuses activity for achievement and things like that, and yet it's very important. We sometimes seem to think activity isn't important. The last prime minister who completely controlled foreign policy and traveled and paid a heavy political price for it, even though he was doing the right thing, was Rajiv Gandhi, mm -hmm. right? And this is what Vijayji raised, that there was so much neglect of foreign policy, and you know this may not seem important to us, but out of the 160 odd members of the United Nations, about 100 to 120 would be governance deficit states yep. that see activity as achievement. It is their substitute for achievement. Yeah. So if you send for the funeral of a king or something, if you send a vice president, they'd be like, who is the vice president in the scheme of things? He has no executive power, he is not the head of state. What is he? So the prime minister needs to go there. Unfortunately, whether we like it or not, the Prime Minister needs to go there, and that's what he's done. He's finished the um, account book of major league visits. I can tell you for a fact the Egyptians were extremely upset that Mohammed Morsi, the deposed uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, pre uh, president of mm -hmm. Egypt, for example, he said, look, I came to you guys uh, as a standalone visit. I didn't even combine you with Pakistan. Yeah. And what do I get? Did I even get a state visit for you to buttress my position? No. So these things matter in the overall scheme of things. and. There is the other point to what um, uh, Gaurav raised, which is, you know, this hearts and minds thing. Mm. Soft power is great, but soft power has to go with hard power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to use a bit of a ribald um, piece of humor that General Norman Schwarzkopf used when, you know, the first, uh, the liberation yeah, of well, Kuwait guy, yeah. which is he said, look, hearts and minds will follow when you've got somebody by the balls. <laughs> uh, and that, unfortunately, is the reality of things. The, the question is, and this is the dichotomy here, and it's an important dichotomy. If you start becoming an expeditionary force and get your act together, Will your neighborhood, which does not see the rise of India, which welcomes the rise of India, it does not see the rise of India in the same threatening terms as it sees the rise of China, mm. will it be that accommodating of India? Mm. On the other hand, I would much rather have tangibles rather than esoteric Hindi, Chini, bhai, bhai mm. um, yeah. uh, nonsense like yeah, that. Rhetoric. Yeah, rhetoric. Yeah.